Hello, this is the IT Dice, and today we're going to be looking at page layout. So, what we're going to look at first is how to change the orientation of your page. Do this under the Page Layout tab at the top of your screen. Then, you click on Orientation. This gives you option, options of having the page Portrait, like this, or Landscape, like this. I'm going to leave my page as Portrait. You can also change the size of your page. So, if you want to make an A3 document, you can click under Size to A3, as opposed to A4, which is the standard default. This thing gives you the A3 page. I'm going to change it back to A4, like so. You can also change the size of the margins. This is the area around the outside of what you write. This will not normally, this is the area normally you leave blank to allow for the areas on the page the printer can't actually print. You can change the margins to suit the size of your document. For example, you can change them to moderate. This will narrow the space at the beginning and also above the, di the writing. I can also change them to narrow. This narrows this space and also this space. I've got this in the header. You can also customize the margins by changing each of the margins to suit individually. So I could go with something like that. I am going to turn the margins back to their normal size. You can now change the number of columns you have in your document. For example, you might want to use two columns or more if you're writing a newspaper article. You do this by clicking on the Columns tab. You can click two, three, or more columns. You also have the options of having a small column on the left or the right, like so. If you click on the more columns, you get the option of having as many columns as you want. But obviously, the more you write, the smaller the writing will be. It limits you to 12 columns, because any more than that, you wouldn't fit any words into the columns. So, I'm going to go back down to two columns, like so. This is the standard you'd use in Microsoft Word. You can also choose to put a line between the columns or not by clicking in this checkbox here. I'm going to put a line between the columns just so you can see where they are. And I'm going to press OK. I can, you can now press Enter. You will now go on to the second column. And once you've gone onto the second column, it will put this dark line down the middle of your page. This is showing where the columns are. So it's got one column here and one column here. So, when you're typing so down the bottom of this column, I'm just going to talk, type something like this. It will automatically take the writing over to the next page, like so. I press enter, it will only take the next line onto that page. Cut that. There we go. If I make this text a lot bigger, like this, it will take it over onto the next column that doesn't fit here. Right, I've taken away our columns now. So, what we're going to look at now is under page layout, how to change the colour of your page. So, what we're going to look at first is the colour. So, colour, you can choose from any of these default colours. You can click on more colours, where you can either have any of these standard colours, or customise your own. I'm going to go for a light blue, and I'm going to make it slightly lighter, like so. This, and then we'll press OK and we'll set my whole page to this colour. However, having a page just one colour can be a bit boring. So, you go to Fill Effects, where it will give you the option of having the effects on one colour, having two colours, 
like this, which give you even more options. Like say have a diagonal, or you can have any of their presets, like so, like you can have the file or peacock. I like this peacock, so I'm going to go with this one and set it as OK. I've now got this multicolored page. To turn the page colors off, you click on the page color tab and you press no color, like so. To set a watermark on your page, you can click on watermarks. You can choose from any of the ones that already exist, like these, or you can create a custom watermark. This could be anything. You can have a picture that you can set from your files, or you can create your own text watermark. It has a list of options here already, so I'm going to say the IT guy's top secret. Like so. This is my own custom watermark. You can also change the colour of the watermark. So I'm going to have a semi transparent red watermark go diagonally across my page, so the IT guy's top secret. Just like that. OK? And now I have it in my page, like so. You can write over the top of these watermarks, no problem. So, the last thing I'm going to show you today is the page borders. You do this by clicking on the page borders and get page layout. You have lots of options when it comes up. Don't be alarmed, it is actually a lot easier than you might think. So I'm going to first go with a general box border. It's going to have this triple line style, which is going to be a little bit thicker. And I want to make it red, like so. I can apply this to the whole document, this section, the very first page in this document, everything except the first page. I can also have the border on customized sides. For example, I might only want it on the sides and not on the top or bottom. You do this by unhighlighting the top and the bottom lines here, like so. You can turn all of them off, or just one, or two, or three, or all of them on, like so. Then, when you're happy with this preview, you click OK, and it will put this border on your document, like so. So now this is looking a lot nicer than when we started. Finally, I'm going to put an art for a border in. So, I'm going to go with Christmas trees. Even though it's just gone Christmas, I'm still feeling festive. So, I can then apply these to the whole document. Pressing OK will give me Christmas trees as you do. So, this has been Jack from the IT Guys, and this is the IT Guys out.